Uh, so we're backstage at the World Transformed with the one and only Ken Loach. We've got to be brief because Jeremy Corbyn's on soon and I know you, you, you don't want to miss it, right? How many times have you seen him, though? Um, well, I've known him over quite a long period. I mean, when, um, when he was um, backbencher, we did a screening of a film in, uh, in his constituency and it was, it was nice. And it was, it, it, I, he always struck me as a very genuine, friendly, authentic person really of, of serious principles and you've been making important movies on the left for decades how many how many times have you come to Labour Party conference is this a regular thing for you no I, I'm I came last year um, and I came once or twice in the 80s we did a documentary about Labour and Tory conferences in um, when Tebbit said get on your bike we were there for that one and it was just very interesting it's just social events the two are very different, mm. as you'd imagine, and very um, and reveal a lot, you know, about um, the the um, the attitude of Tories to each other and to organisation is very is culturally very different, um, and um, we've got something to learn from them, not very much, <laughs> but there's a bit. Will you be there next week? No, no, <laughs> I won't be there. I'm too old for it now. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a bigger question, which yeah. is that I think the left is feeling very confident here because we feel like for once we're almost winning politics. We're not in government yet, but we're getting there. Is the left winning culture? Um, well, it depends how we define culture. I think in amongst the cultural events and things that we read, like the people who come to this meeting and the people who are here, yes, of course, where it's expressing what we feel. Um, the dominant culture of the mass media, television, of broadcasting, that's as hostile as ever. Um, I was listening to the, um, the political programme this morning on Radio 5 Live with um, John Pina, and he referred to Jeremy Corbyn as someone who was seen as a figure of fun, as a backbencher. Now... He wasn't a figure of fun. He was a man who stood on principle and who said, spoke very clearly uh, with a radical analysis. Um, he's only a figure of fun to people like Pinar and his BBC pals. They're figures of fun to us. But, but you don't want, an, like the national broadcaster, to be just talking in those terms. So no, we, we, don't, we haven't won that cultural battle at all. And uh, I think we won't until we're in government and when we're in government then we have to make certain we're in power because they're not the same and transform I mean we're talking about transforming the world we've got to start with the BBC um, and the press what's the your, your top three reforms for the BBC and the press what, what, what are we going to um, do to them well to change the ownership I mean I think to to, to have a license to run a national newspaper or well, any newspaper it should be a collective owned collectively by the journalists and the printers or um, administrators um, should be collective. So there's n no, no press barons um, and no ownership of the mass media uh, because there should be a, a, f a democratic forum and run by people who care about um, music and drama and documentaries and the, you know, the, the craft and, and, the, and the content. Uh, the idea that it's dominated by either state appointees or by billionaires is is completely anti-democratic. And speaking of the craft and the contact, have you got any other movies on the way? Um, no, we've done a little intro for John McDonnell on tomorrow, actually. Oh, but, uh, so I've got to go and check that tomorrow morning. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Well, I don't know if there'll be another one. I mean, it's it's a tough course to get around, you know, when you're old. But anyway, yeah. we'll see. Well, you've... you've, you've You've already provided a lot of cinematic content for the left. You've, you've, we're, we're all very proud of you. Oh, well, that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy okay. the rest of your evening. Enjoy the Jeremy Corbyn speech. Yes. All the best to Navarro, too. <laughs> to, to trap a few right-wingers in. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get them. Yeah. Uh, how, do they, how do they... What's your... Obviously, you're welcome with open arms. Everyone celebrates you here. <laughs> do you ever come across people from the other side of the Labour Party? How do they react? Um, no, I was kind of, um, I wasn't part, I mean, was never part of that, um, you know, what was it, Cool Britannia and all that, mm. you know, when he, when Blair schmoozed the, um, 
the pop stars and that. Um, no, <laughs> I was never invited to those gigs, really. <laughs> um, but I tell you, a guy, he's, if you ever get the chance to talk to him, um, he's worth talking to, is John Pilger, who, who made um, his art was to get right-wingers on and then scalp them. And you'd be good at that. So mm. it's worth, um, if, you, if you're ever in a situation where he's near, worth having a chat to him and talking about how it, the, the art of trapping right-wing politicians in interviews. So that's, that's two people that will always be welcome on Navarra Media. John Pilger <laughs> and anyone who sits slightly to the right of us so we can have a nice Barney. <laughs> Uh, you have to trap them. You have to wear a tie, you know, and a suit, and oh, pretend to be like them. You see, this is the snag. Yeah. You see, that's where I always, that's where I always fall down. I'm giving off the wrong signals. <laughs> you're, on the, you're looking very smart, Ken. Well, y yes. Don't look too closely. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a very bad light. So. Oh, nice to see you. Yeah. All you too, best. mate. Yeah. Good evening.